My name is Muhammad Hussein Al Amudi. I'm in Eritrea. I was born in a place where they call it Ali Gider in Eritrea. I, I was born in 1955, 11, 12, 1955. Okay, and uh, Muhammad, uh, I came to know that you have been uh, in prison in Eritrea, and I came to know that you have been in America before you came back to Eritrea. Could you just tell me what happened and why did you go back from America to Eritrea and what happened the last years that you were in Eritrea? Okay, when I was in America, I just go over there for course. I was taking a course six months, English language. Then uh, I used to work with, uh, I have a cousin of mine, he's a very rich man. You know, he used to help me a lot to invest some money in told me what you think if you go back to Eritrea after they take the referendum to invest there because he was born there it's a new country so I was say good okay then I go to Ethiopia from Ethiopia I come to Djibouti from Djibouti I enter to Eritrea I have with me about two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars to come to invest so they catch me I was going uh, Asap uh, the first time and then uh, Mahidin Shangab, he come over there in Asab, when he come there, he told him he's my cousin and everything, so they told me, okay, you put the money in, in, in the bank, okay, everything will be okay, and I don't have the time, the nationality, they say, okay, we can give you the nationality of Eritrea, yes, you are Eritrean, but you have to sign this paper, you, you don't have any other nationality. I say, good, and then after Maybe two months, I was sitting in a bar, they call it Bar America in Asmara, and we was talking. That was in uh, uh, this uh, September, September 25, I remember 2001, about 10 o'clock at night, I was talking to some older friends, we were saying, why those 15 people, they've been arrested now, and they was suffer. they was, fighting for the country after they get the freedom now <coughs> you put them in jail and why he's doing that the president and that was about it that we don't say nothing else then when i come out uh, after one hour the fbi they was waiting for me the security of eritrea they say we want to talk to you i say no problem they put me in the car they took me to a place but i never been there before in this, throw me there, they give me to the police, they have a secret uh, place they take you. And they left me there, one day, two days, six months, I can't even talk to nobody. After six months, one guy, coroner, his name was Simret, he come, he told me, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay, but I want to know why I'm here, why, what I'm doing here in jail. For what? What I done something wrong? He said, don't worry, we're going to call you. So I go inside, I ask the people there, hey, how are you? How long have you been here? Some people, they say five years. Some people, six years. Some people, ten years. I was shocked. I say, wow, those people, they mean, what's going to happen to me? I ask them, what you do? He say, I never even know what I did. So nobody know what kind of crime they commit. They just take you and throw you there. Anyway, when I was there, I met a lot of good people, like, uh, very intelligent people, all the people. I remember, uh, one of them was Hassan Keke, was all guy, was a rich man. And one of them, his name is Abdu. Abdu, they call him his, father, his son. He was the father of Ali Abdu. He was, a, he was one of the minister, he was in Eritrea. And I met brother Dawood Sak, he's generous. He's telling me he's to, uh, he has a uh, Sweden nationality. he been there. Then uh, I met some coroner with Sion, they call it. I met a lot of people. So me and Dawood Saba was for two years in one camera. Cameras means... One cell. In one cell means, mm -hmm. okay? Cell where you take, take six people. They put also in the big, like, you know, big cell. Me and him and uh, this coroner with Sion, Colonel John, and two people from Afar. 
I thought this is uh, some kind of uh, ethnic people they are entire but they are ethnic group ethnic Afar group. ethnic group Afar ethnic group so it was two years mean that was he was the one who used to bring our camp server from the store you bring the you give you a piece of paper and a pen you write what you need if you have an account and your money like if you want to buy soda or cigarette or milk you know he is the one who used to bring to us so he was he was moving a little bit they gave him some kind of movement but at the same time he was very upset because he's been there for so long and he doesn't know when he come out but i remember one time they took him out in 2006 i think so the beginning of it and he was there for one week and they returned him back to jail i said what happened david he said because the embassy the ambassador of sweden he he called me in the phone then I got to see him, so they turned me back. They say, why you have to talk to the embassy of Sweden? That's it, they say, that's it. From that time, we've been together for another year with him. And then 2007, October, they took me to Shatshaima, the sixth uh, police station, they call it. And I left there, and when I come back, there, I don't know where they put him. So because the, the, the prison is so too big, the place, his underground is some kind, I don't know, that's been made, I think so, for not for <laughs> not even crazy people that can stay in this place. Okay, and that's what I know about Dawood. He was a very good friend of mine for two years. He liked to read a lot, he smoked a lot of cigarettes. He, is, he doesn't like to talk too much. And he was saying, say, the government of Sweden, they done everything for me. They even uh, lose the friendship of uh, with Eritrea because of me and you know he was talking a lot but he said I, I know I'm not gonna go out from this prison until as yes the president he died or this government he will change but I know I will not go out that's what he was saying okay he was Salah al Jazairi that was his friend too he was uh, one of those uh, guys that was working together I think so he was a generous too so they was always talk together you know that's all I can say. And I, I think, after all this, just like I say, I come to Sweden. I think the government, or the people of Sweden, they accept me as a refugees. They open their heart. They give me a shelter place to stay. They gave me a medical treatment. And I'm waiting to be accepted as a seeking asylum. And how, I, long, how long did you stay in jail, in total? In, in total, I said 13 years. 13 years exactly I stay. When I was there, 11 years, my wife, my two sons, my daughter, they was, they lost hope. They said, well, our father is not coming out no more. So they tried to go, they come to Sudan, and they went to Libya. They died in the water, in the sea. Okay, there was, I remember there was in 2013, October 3, so I lost my eye in jail because there was no medication, there was no doctors. Okay, I've been tortured. My tooth it was taken by pliers, you know. A lot of things that happened to me and I'm never gonna forget. But I think it's God, I'm still alive. You know, I am blind, but I can't talk right now what happened to me, what I see. Because I am in a country where it's free to speak, free to tell what's in your mind, free to tell the truth. That's why I'm very happy to be here. What would you say to the Eritreans who are here in Sweden and uh, denying all what you are telling that these things are not happening in Eritrea? What I'm saying, if those people, they deny what happens in, in Eritrea, why they came here then? If they say is the government there is good, why they come here? No, those people, they be saying that, that means they're lying. Because when they come here, they seek for asylum, they say, oh, because our country. But when they see things like this, that I've been there, then they say, no, there's nothing happened like this. So why you came here? Because if they don't believe my story, that means, uh, I don't understand. Because I come from there and I know what they're doing. And they know exactly what happened there. Okay? But those people, they come here when they seek for asylum, they say, because we come here, because uh, the government is... No good, uh, this and that. So now, soon they get their paper, oh, 
No, our government is good. Our, no. There is another group who, who applied for asylum during the Ethiopian uh, administration. And now, I mean, they have been living here for more than 25 years. Eritrea became independent in 1993-91. So, uh, at least officially 93-91 was the Independence Day. So, what about those who have stayed longer here and still saying like these things could not happen in Eritrea? Okay, if those, uh, I mean, okay, let's say they came here when the Ethiopian time, yeah, okay, because really it was a problem. But now, <coughs> after they took a referendum and they became independent, things change. Now, if they think it's good there, hey, they can, see, they can go see. They can go stay there, but I don't think what's so good about it. It is nothing good about it. Even if you've been so long, okay, if you think the country is good, so you talk about it's nothing happening like this, there, so why why you come here for them? Can you stay there? Okay, so they, they're not telling the truth, those people. Why do you think they freed you finally? Because every, everyone else who has been with you is still there. Why do you think? What is the reason they really... The reason because I become blind, okay? Yeah. I stayed blind for four years. From 2011 I was blind until I came out 2013, 14. Okay, so they say, oh, this man blind, he cannot, he can't do nothing no more. Can't even let's let him out and watch him where he going. But I was blind in the eye, but I wasn't blind in my heart. I can see my way out, huh? and I make it. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the Eritreans who are, uh, I mean, families of those imprisoned who are waiting that one day they could see their children back? Oh, because some of those people that I see that they was with me, okay, but some of those people. We don't even know where they are, so his family, but so some of those people, uh, they waiting for their kids, they are in prison. Hey, I, was, I feel sorry for them, but they have to wait. Because as long as this government is in power, nobody will be released. I know that for a fact. Because you know, when they release one of them after 10, 20 years, you know, just like me, he gonna, he, they're going to talk. So they're going to make them bad. And he don't care to make them bad. They don't care. The act of uh, government, those people, in, in chair right now, this group is like a mafia controlling the country, okay? They don't care what they say about them. Because the world, they know what's going on. The world, they know what's going on. Thousands of people dying every year going to Libya. Thousands of people dying, they took their kidneys and they, they sell it in Sina. You know, a lot of things happened to the Eritrean young men. In, in the world, they seen that and they can't do nothing about it. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I hope very soon things will be okay. Okay, I, I hope things will be okay. And those family, if you have a son, you have a brother, you have a father in jail, hey, you have to be patient and just wait. Maybe one day he will be out. Maybe he will not make it out. Who knows? Because a lot of people, they die over there too. I hear a lot of people there. I hear night time they have a special place to beat up people. He's screaming. I hear a lot of screaming at night time. I say, what is this? They say, it's just a place where they beat the people. Okay, so uh, it's bad, really bad. In Sweden, there has been a debate about Dawit Isaac. Yeah. The government was, I mean, both governments, the previous one or the current government was saying, they are trying to uh, to deal with the Eritrean government in silent diplomacy, mm -hmm. and silently we will try to free Dawit. Do you think whether it's a silent diplomacy or uh, other strategy would free Dawit Isa? Oh, I think I don't know, but this uh, government I can trust uh, Eritrean government. They might tell you something tomorrow. They they say something else. But if they do that, it will be good, but still though, I don't think so, because uh, this man is greedy for money. He's all thinking about money, he's not thinking about this. Believe it or not, that's Djibouti guy, poor people, they released in a couple of weeks. From Djibouti, because the Qatar, Qatar government, they go, they, he got money from them, not just like this, yeah. And uh, diplomatic Swedish, they tried before. They used to give millions of dollars every year to help Eritrea. 
right or wrong? Now they're not giving nothing because after the order rested, uh, they told to the embassy, okay, I yeah, will release it very soon. Then they don't answer back. Uh, ain't they were diplomats? Uh, it's too late for that one now. I know it's still a young, but still though, I think it's mentally a little bit, little bit a bit because after you do so many years, 15, 16 years, it's too much to be there in prison, 11, 12, whatever. Do you have any message to Eritreans living in the, the diaspora and to the Swedish public? Oh, all the Eritreans live here. I was telling me, you all are very lucky. You should be happy to live here in left the government of Eritrea. And I wish you very soon if this government to change, we are going to go back home. Because we don't come here because we hate, back, we hate our country. We don't come here because we are hungry. We come here because if, because it's the government, it is no law, it is no justice, it is no human rights, there is no human speak, nothing we have. Okay, I am telling to the people in Swedish and all over the world, the Russian people, you know, I wish you good luck and be patient. One day you will have freedom, you will return back to your home and then come back to other second home, whatever nationality you have, and things will be okay. Just thanks God because you are not there to see what happened, just like happened to me to the other people or to the other side for being in Britain for because he wrote something or he said something. Thank you, Mohammed. Yeah.